Good morning, Calvary. Pastor Chad here with your word for the day. And today we're in Genesis chapter 6. Uh, and, and can I just ask you, do you ever wonder why? Do you ever wonder why bad things happen? Why bad things happen to good people? Why, why stuff doesn't work out? Do you ever wonder why the world is so broken? As I mentioned before, Genesis is about beginnings. And so in Genesis chapter 3, we discover the beginning of sin. And, and in Genesis chapter 4, you get the, the very first murder that's ever you know, uh, happened occurs. And, and, and then in Genesis 6, things go off the rails for evil. And, and it's a weird passage. So let me just read that to you today. Because it's about the sons of God and the daughters of men. And there's a lot of controversy about this passage. So... Genesis says, when man began to multiply on the face of the land and daughters were born to them, the sons of God saw that the daughters of man were attractive and they took as their wives any that they chose. And then the Lord said, my spirit shall not abide with man forever for his flesh, his days shall be 120 years. The Nephilim were on the earth in those days and also afterward when the sons of God came into the daughters of man and they bore children to them, these were the mighty men who were of old, the men of renown. And then it says, it goes on to say that God saw the wickedness and he grieved in his heart that he had made man. And, and it led to a reset. Uh, that's the Noah story. We're going to get into that starting tomorrow. So, uh, weird passage. Sons of God married the daughters of men and great men of renown were born to them. What does that mean? Well, there's two kind of biblical explanations and I've heard scholars argue both of them. Uh, it really doesn't matter which one you choose. It doesn't change your life in any way, shape, or form. One, one possible explanation that we'll call the common explanation is that the sons of God were the children, the sons literally of Seth, who was a godly man who followed in Adam's footsteps. And, and the daughters of men were the daughters of Cain who had killed his brother uh, Abel and was cursed. And so you had the godly and the ungodly getting together. Uh, and so the wicked corrupted the, the sons of God. Now, the little bit more uh, sensational understanding is that the sons of God were fallen angels. You know, that they rebelled with Satan against God. They lost that battle. They were cast out of heaven. And that somehow uh, they married women and uh, generated these, uh, you know, exceptional men uh, of renown. Now, either result, it was bad. Okay, it was bad, and God uh, grieved in his heart and decided he was going to you know, start over again and, and pick Noah because he was a righteous man and his family. So what can we learn from this? I mean, this is a crazy passage of Scripture. It's in there kind of as an aside, as a bridge almost from the generations of Adam, uh, and, and we get to get to Noah. And so what do we learn from this story? Well, two obvious lessons, if you will. The first one is rebellion against God in any form leads to destruction. Uh, if you go with the sensational story and they were fallen angels who were marrying women, then uh, obviously they went off the rails when they rebelled against God. They understood God, they understood his majesty and his glory, and they rebelled and it led to terrible destruction uh, because they didn't live out their God-created purpose. Now, the, the second obvious lesson is bad company corrupts good morals. If you go with the common view that the sons of God were just the, the children of Seth, then, uh, you know, they were good guys and they married, you know, bad women and they were led astray. Uh, which, by the way, happens. Now, Calvary exists to lead people to a life-changing relationship with Jesus. I mean, that's what we're all about. So we want you to have relationships with people who are far from God. Intentional, purposeful, real relationships, sharing life with them. But, but here's the catch. We want you to influence them, not the other way around. We want you to lead them to a life-changing relationship with Jesus. We don't want them to lead you to destruction, which is why we really encourage you to be in worship. You know, join us for worship five services a weekend on our two campuses. Join us online, live streaming, four different worship times. You can watch the services on demand. Uh, look, you've got opportunity to be in worship. Feed your soul in worship. And then secondly, join a life group. Uh, and we've had over a thousand adults each se session in life groups, and which means that there's plenty of room for you. There's more room for you because about half of you that are even watching this aren't in a life group. And life group is an opportunity to surround yourself with people who love Jesus and who are going in the same direction for the same purpose and the same mission as you. Uh, so I'd encourage you to make sure that you Feed your own soul 
Surround yourself with godly people so that you can be an impact on those who are far from God. And remember this, Proverbs says, the one who walks with the wise becomes wise. I hope that helps. I hope that helps you understand scripture, and I hope that helps change your life. God bless Calvary.